In this tutorial, I'll show you how to blur out a face or a logo using motion tracking in Blender. So that's what I'll be showing you how to do in this video. So in this Blender tutorial, I'll show you how to blur out a face or a logo in a video using motion tracking and masking in Blender. And what's really great about using motion tracking in Blender is that you don't have to do any rotoscoping. So rotoscoping is where you make a mask, but then every frame you have to manually animate the mask, and that can be very time consuming and it can be pretty boring and tedious. But with motion tracking, it'll track the position, and then we can just parent the mask to the track. Real quick before we start, if you'd like to help support me and my YouTube channel to help me keep on creating Blender tutorials, then some great ways to do that are by checking out my Gumroad store and my Patreon page, where you can get 3D models and assets, tutorial files, artwork project files, procedural materials, and much more Blender content on my Gumroad and Patreon. And if you'd like to help support the channel here on YouTube, then you can check out the YouTube memberships by clicking down there on that join button. And by joining the YouTube memberships, you'll get some cool perks here on YouTube, and you'll be helping to support the channel monthly. And you can also use the super thanks feature here on YouTube to send me a little tip if you find this video helpful. All right, so here we are in a new scene in Blender and I'm gonna start by clicking on file and let's go here to new. And then I'm gonna go down here and we're actually gonna be opening up video editing. So here we are in Blender's video editor and I'm gonna start by adding in the footage. So I'm gonna bring my mouse right here on the sequencer and I'll press shift A or you can also go here to the add menu and I'm gonna go here and click on movie. And then I can just locate to the folder where I have the video and I'll just select the video and then I will click on add movie strip. The other way to add in a video is to just drag and drop the video from your file browser into Blender's video editor. So here's the video in Blender and I'm gonna hold down the control key and then click with my middle mouse wheel just to make this bigger and then I can just click and hold with my middle mouse wheel to bring this up. And if you'd like to learn all about video editing in Blender, then I recently created a complete tutorial series on Blender video editing, so if you'd like to check that out, the link will be in the description. Now I'm also going to click right down here on the lighter blue strip, that is the audio strip, and then right over here on the side panel, if you press the N key, you can click here on display waveform, just so I can see the audio. And then you can press the space bar to play the video. Now some things which are really important important right when you add in the video is you need to make sure you're using the correct frame rate. So my video is 60 frames per second and Blender actually auto detected the frame rate when I added in this video. So it may auto detect it for you, but just make sure that you're using the frame rate that you want to use. And then also make sure that you're using the correct resolution to automatically set the resolution to the video's resolution. You can select the video and then you can click here on strip and you can go down here to movie strip and then just click on set render size. And so that'll set the render size. And then I want to make sure I get the end frame and the start frame correct. So I'm going to zoom in here and click with my middle mouse wheel to move over there. Make sure that is at frame one. I can go here to the very end and I can click right up here to drag the playhead over and I'm going to zoom in by scrolling with the mouse wheel. And you can see here is the end frame. So you can see the playhead is right here at the very end. And so this number here, this is the current frame that we're on. So I just need to hover my mouse over this value and press control C to copy that. Hover my mouse over this value and press control V to paste that. So the end frame is right there. And if I zoom in, I actually need to make it one frame over. So right here, I'll click on the arrow just to bring the frame one frame over. So now I can play through this and you can see once it goes to the very end, it jumps to the starting. All right, so I now wanna track out my face because I'm gonna be blurring my my face in this video. So to do the motion tracking, we're going to click right here on the plus, and this is going to add a new workspace. Now right here, we can go down to VFX, and we want to choose motion tracking. So here's the motion tracking layout, although most of these things we're not going to need. So what I'm actually going to do is click right here when the crosshair appears, and I can click, hold my mouse down, drag over, and then let go just to close that. And then also I don't need the 3D viewport, so I can click right here, and then drag up, and then let go. And then this right here, I can drag this up, and then I'm gonna click right here, I'm gonna drag up, then I can drag down and let go just to close that so we have a bit more space. So then I need to click here on open to open up the footage. And then again, I'll just locate to the same folder. I will click on the footage and then let's click on open clip. So now if you press the space bar or hit the play here, I can just play that going through. And if I click right here and then drag up, I can bring up the timeline and I can zoom out here and then I can drag the playhead around to watch the video. And something to notice is that this video is synced up with the video in the video editing because if I click back here to go to the video editing, you can see this starts at frame one and so it's synced up at the same position. So if I go over here to motion tracking, you can see it's at the same frame. So now let's do the motion tracking. So I'm going to zoom in to my face here so you can use the scroll wheel to zoom in and out and then you can click down with the scroll wheel button and then drag around to move this around. 
So now you just need to find a good place to track. And so you could like track an eye, or if you have some sort of logo on a shirt or something, then you could track maybe the corner of a letter or something which really stands out. I am just going to track my nose because it's in the very center of my face, but you could also track an eye or something else which stands out. So I'm going to zoom in here and I will hold down the control key and I'm going to click here right on my nose. And then I can also click here on this little white tab here and I can drag out and this is going to make it bigger and I actually might bring it over here to kind of this darker area because the motion tracking tends to track better when there's a lot of contrast. Like if I were trying to motion track something way up here, that would be pretty hard to track and Blender probably wouldn't track it very well because there isn't much contrast. So contrast can really help Blender to be able to track it better. So now to actually tell Blender to track this, if you press the T key, that's going to open up this side panel and you can click here on track and make sure you're on the track tab right here. So now there are some track settings. So I can click on this button here and this is gonna go back and this button is gonna go forward. So let's start by going back and it's okay that I'm starting in the very center of the video. I can just track forward and then track back. So let's click on this button here and this will start to track back. And you can see it's already done most of it on its own. But as you can see, after a while, it will lose it. At some point, it's going to lose the track. Now, this track actually worked really well. And if your camera is very shaky or if it's kind of blurry, then it may not track that well. So there may be more spots where you need to manually fix it. Now, what I can also do right up here is click on the track button. And if you press the N key, that's going to open up that side panel. And I can click and drag and you can see there's the track. So there's my nose. And I can just click and drag here and I can play through that and I can just make sure that it's always tracked to my nose. So now I can zoom in here and I can just go to the spot where it lost the track. You can see my nose is kind of blurry and it also went out of the shot. So what I can do now is hit G to grab. So I'm just going to move this around, place it there. And then if I click here to play this again, you can see it doesn't know where it is. So I'll hit G to grab and I can drag this over here. And then because I'm moving out of the shot, I can just use the back arrow to go back hit G to grab, move this over, hit the back arrow again, and then G to grab, move that over, and hit the back arrow again, and I'll just move that over there. All right, so now if I play through this, you can see this is where the blurred area is gonna be, and then if I just play through this or scrub through the timeline, you can see I come in. So now I just need to track forward. So to do that, I'm gonna click on this button here, and this will track forward. And you can see for some reason it lost the track, it didn't know where it was, so I can just move my mouse here and press G to grab, and I can just fix it. So I'm just going to stick it right there. And then again, I can click track forward and then it's going to track it. You can see it jumped ahead. So it's already tracked most of it. And if you want to see where Blender has already tracked, you can see there's this little tiny purple line here under this editor. And then there's also this yellow line. And so that is showing you where it's already tracked. You can see right over here, it hasn't tracked it. But then right here in this yellow area, it's already tracked it. So I can just use the arrow keys to go here to the end. You can see for some reason it lost the track. So I'll hit G to grab and then I will stick that there. And then I can just go right here and click on the track forward again. And it's going to continue to track it. And you can see it got most of the way there. So it's almost at the end. But you can see as I'm walking away, it is getting a little bit blurry. So I'll hit G to grab, stick that there. And then I can click on track forward. You can see it lost it again. So hit G to grab, stick it there. And then again, we'll click on the track forward. And now I've totally gone out of the shot, so it doesn't know where the track is. So I'm just going to now manually place this. So I will move that over. Then I can hit the forward arrow to move one frame over and then hit G to grab, stick that there. And I'll just do that for a few more frames and just kind of move that about where you think it would be. So now I can go through here and I can play the entire thing. So I'll just press the space bar to play. All right, so that is it. So we are done with the motion tracking. So now we just need to create a mask. So to create a mask, we're gonna click right up here on this button and you can see it says tracking and let's change this to mask instead. So now we need to click right up here on this button which says new to create a new mask. So I'm now gonna zoom in here and I'm just gonna move to kind of the center of the video where my face is pointing at the camera. And then to add the mask, you can hold down the control key and then you can just click and that is going to add a little dot there. And then I can hold down the control key and click here and just continue to hold down the control key and click all around where you wanna blur it. So whether it's a face or a logo or something else that you want to blur, you can just create the shape of it. 
Also later on, if you want to change the shape of this as it's moving, like if my head moves to the side, I might want to change the shape of that. I'll show you how to animate this so that it actually changes the shape of the mask. And also right here, don't worry about this spot, the starting and the ending of the mask, Blender will automatically fill this. So now I need to take all the points of the mask and I need to parent that to the track so it moves with the track. So what I'll do is press the A key just to make sure everything is selected. And then I need to hold down the shift key and just make sure that I select one of these points here and make sure that it is the white selection. And then these are the orange selection. So why this one is the white selection is because it's the active one. So just make sure that you have an active selection. So I can now hold down the shift key and also select the track. So click there to select the track. And then I can press control P. So control P and now the mask is paired to the track. So now if I play this, you can see the mask is moving. Now there are a few problems with this, like if I move over here, you can see it hasn't actually changed to the shape of my face. So we can animate the shape of the mask as it's moving along with the video. So to do this, I'm going to click on this button right here, and this is the auto key. So now that the auto key is on, whenever we move the mask, it's automatically going to add a keyframe to the mask position. So now I can hit G to grab, move the mask over, stick it there. I can also hit R to rotate, S to scale, and G to grab. And if I want to, I can select single points and I can kind of move these points around. So now that I've done that, you can see there's that little yellow line there. If I move over, you can see there's that tiny little yellow line, and that is telling us there's a keyframe there. So then like right over here, I can hit G to grab, just stick that back there, and I can do that for the entire face. You can see my head is kind of rotated, so I'll hit R to rotate and G to grab and just kind of fix that, and I can just go along the entire thing, so I might scale this down a bit. So now I can just play through this and make sure that it's covering my face, and I can adjust the size if I need to. And then I'll go here to the end as I'm walking out, and I can scale this part down and bring it over by hitting G to grab, and I might want to just scale this down on the x-axis, so I will hit S to scale, and then you can hit Y or X, and I'll just squish it down. So now you can just go back here to the starting and you can just play through it and you can make sure it looks good. So now that we're done with the adjustments, we can click on this button here and this will turn off the auto key. So we can now jump back to Blender's video editor and we can add the blur. So let's click right here on the video editing workspace to go back to the video editor. So I now want to select the video strip and I'm going to press shift D to duplicate it. And then I can click and drag with my mouse wheel and I want to bring it up on the Y axis and I'll stick it here. So we now have two different video strips on top of each other. So now here on this top one, I can click right over here on the modifiers. And if you don't see this, press the N key to open the side panel. So now here on modifiers, let's click on add modifier and I can add the mask modifier. And then right here, we want to click over on mask because we're using a mask. We can select the mask here and there's only one mask. So we will choose the mask. Now you can see it appears as though nothing happened. But if I click on the bottom strip here, I can press H to hide it. And now if I go along here, you can see it's just showing us what is in the mask. But because they are on top of each other, if I just select this video strip here, I can press Alt H to unhide it. And now they're just on top of each other. So I can now click on the top video strip. This one has the mask. And with this strip selected, I'll press Shift A. And I'm going to go here to Effects Strip. And I'm going to add Gaussian Blur. So because we had this strip selected when we added the Gaussian Blur, it's going to add the blur to this video strip. So then if you select the Gaussian Blur, you can click right up here on the Strip Settings. And there is a size X and Y. So to change these values at the same time, you can click on the X. And then you can drag down to the Y. And then you can drag back and forth and that is going to blur the X and Y at the same time. And you can now see my face is being blurred. So I will turn this up really high. I'm actually going to click and then drag down and then let go. And I'm going to type in like 100 so it's quite blurred. So there we go. Now I can just play through this and it is slightly laggy, but it is nice and blurred now. Now, if you want to blur this even more, if I turn up the size really high to like 200, you can see it's so blurred, you can kind of see through the blur. So I'm going to change the X and Y size back to 100. So if you want to blur this even more, you can select the Gaussian blur. You can press shift A, go to effect strip, and you can add another Gaussian blur. And then right here on the size X and Y, you can blur the blur. And I found that this is a better way to make the blur even stronger. So we can now just 
render this to a final video. So I'll show you the video settings that I like to use. So here is the frame rate and the resolution, and you should go over these at the starting before you actually do any of the editing. So let's scroll right down here, and then right here we can set an output. So I'm going to click on this file icon. Then I'm going to choose the folder where I'm saving the files, and I can just rename this to blurred video. So I'll type in blurred video and then click on accept. And then here on the file format, I use the FFmpeg video. And then here on the encoding, I like to use the container of MPEG4. And then I use H.264 for the video codec and medium quality and good. And then if you have any audio, I like to use AAC for the audio codec. And also I set the sample rate to 48,000 and the bit rate to 256. So those are the settings that I like to use. So then if you haven't saved this Blender file already, you should probably save it just in case it crashes while it's rendering. So you can click on file and save and then to render this video you can press ctrl f12 or click on render and click on render animation and that is it so that is how you blur a face or a logo in a video using motion tracking and masking in blender so i hope you found this tutorial helpful and thank you for watching and if you'd like to help support this channel then some great ways to do that are by checking out my gumroad store and my patreon page and the youtube memberships i'll have all the links in the description but i hope you found this helpful and thanks for watching